Good afternoon, teachers. As promised, I'm here for a Bite Size PD live stream Facebook video. This is the first time I've done this, so like everything I've done this year, it's just a great experiment. Today I want to talk to you about finishing the school year strong. No one can truly appreciate the expression, time flies like a teacher in the final four to six weeks of the school year. As soon as that calendar turns to May, teachers all over the country begin that final countdown to, of the school year. In so many ways, it's an exciting time of year for teachers because the fruits of our labor are truly showing. They get it. The classroom runs like a well-oiled machine. All that work into establishing routines and building a classroom community has paid off. But it also is a time of great stress. As we begin to close out the year, fish, finishing up units and grading final projects, attending data meetings, planning field trips and field day and guest speakers and various end of the year milestone celebrations. I remember going to staff meetings where the whole purpose of the meeting was just to share calendars and make sure that nothing got lost in the planning. It can be exciting, but it's also one of the busiest times of years. So that's why I'm launching these quick bite-sized PD segments to help you get the most out of these final weeks with your students. These are tips, tricks, strategies, and words of inspiration from me to you based on the experiences I've had in the classroom, blog posts I've read, things I've found on Twitter, and suggestions from my network of teacher friends. So here are my five tips for today. The first one is routine is key. The structures that keep your day organized are crucial this time of year. The sun is out, the snow is gone, and students need structure to help keep them focused. It can also be really tempting as a teacher to just wrap things up and spend the rest of the year winging it. But I've learned myself and from teachers who have done this that we often regret it. I learned the hard way <laughs> that if I taught right up to the last day of school, things went much better. So we had reading workshop, writing workshop, math centers, all of it every day, right up to that very last day. I sprinkled in lighter content and summer themed activities were appropriate, but the schedule, the routine, they all stayed the same. This helped my students stay focused, kept their behavior issues to a minimum, and helped me feel more calm as well. We didn't celebrate the last day until the last day. One other thing that, number two, <laughs> the tip is that to remember that not everyone is celebrating the end of the school year. Most of your students are ready, are already dreaming about the summer days and spent at the pool with their siblings and family vacations and enriching summer camps. But some of your students are dreading the end of the school year. Home isn't the safest place for all of the kids in our schools, sadly. For many of your students, you and your classroom provide the structure and the security they don't get at home. It's not uncommon to see these kids acting up this time of year while they prepare to re-enter the chaos that exists in their homes for two months. It's important to check in with these students often and to give them a little extra if you can. While there is very little we can do to fix this problem for our students, we can be mindful of how they're feeling and resist the urge to over-celebrate the conclusion of the school year. Number three. Bring the Great American Read to your classroom. PBS has launched a new series called The Great American Read, in which a list of 100 books has been released for America to determine the most beloved book in the country. This would be a wonderful project to take on with your students or modify it to fit something that you've learned about this year. Giving your students time to reflect on the things that they've learned this year is a great way to sum up the school year and get their feedback about the work they did in class. What if you made a list of all the projects, guest speakers, field trips, books, math centers you did this year and had them choose the best one? What if they had to defend their choice to their classmates either in a live debate or using some of the digital response tools like Flipgrid or Seesaw? These ideas were shared with me by my good friend Darcy Bakigard, a fellow PBS teacher ambassador and former high school English and theater teacher in North Dakota. What I love about these ideas that Darcy shared with me is that this really gives students both voice in how they feel about their learning experiences, which can help us as teachers to plan better experiences for the next school year, and choice in what they choose to reflect upon as the year closes. Number four, maker spaces and design challenges. If you have not tried giving your students maker space time 
or design challenges, this time of year is a great time to get started. When I was in the classroom, I set aside every Friday afternoon for my students to participate in what we called makerspace time. We used supplies from the classroom or items we could get donated. Trust me, if you ask families to bring you cardboard, they will deliver. You will have more than you know what to do with. One year, I challenged my K-1 students to work in teams to create something, anything, using only cardboard and masking tape. While the room was quite crowded with cardboard sculptures, all the students were engaged in their work and working well communicating and collaborating with their classmates in K-1. When everyone finished, each group represented their project to the class and talked about the process of making it. I did something similar with my fourth and fifth graders, too. We used a website called DIY.org to help them find projects that they wanted to do over a period of time. Kids created memes, homemade lip gloss, original videos using clay sculptures, and Lego stop animation videos. PBS Learning Media has some great resources for teachers to do makerspace activities and design challenges with their students. These projects can be as complex or as simple as you make them. Check out the Makers Collection on PBS Learning Media or PBS Kids Design Squad Global Activity. And we'll have the links to these resources available right after the broadcast. These recommendations were given to me by my other friend, Carrie Wardle, who's the PBS Teacher Ambassador at Idaho Public Television. My last tip for you today, and then I'll let you get on with your life this busy time of year, is to be kind to yourself and enjoy these final days of the school year. Remember that you are human, and you can only do so much, and you need to take care of yourself. While there is a lot going on this time of year, and you keep telling yourself, just keep telling yourself that this too shall pass. I know it is tempting to work late, stay up too late, skip lunchtime this time of year because there's so many other things that need your time. Resist the temptation to let all of the end of the year activity take over all of your time. Treat yourself to a latte on the way to work or a cookie on the way home. Stop and take in the spring air blooming flowers, the green grass, and breathe. In no time, you will be sending those students off to their summer vacation. They'll leave with their backpacks stuffed with remnants from their lockers and final report cards and various awards. They may remember some of the activities you led them through these final weeks and talk about them with their families, and they may not. But they will always remember how you made them feel those final days you spent together. Thank you for tuning in to our Bite Size PD Facebook Live event this afternoon. I hope you found it helpful and informative and that you'll tune in again next week for more advice and tips and tricks to help you have a strong finish to the school year. Teach on.